So I see a business as an entity, right? It has a, it has an, a, a government ID number just like you and I do. It has a social security number, it has a taxpayer ID number. It's a business, it's an entity. And so it needs to be cherished and it needs to be taken care of. And it needs to be, it's a child. And uh, so they go through stages of life. Like NTG, I'm involved in, but not like I was, right? That's an adult. Like right. that thing is like, you know, it's got its MBA, right. right? You know, OTR, same thing, right? And so, you know, other businesses we have, MIG, the insurance business is now like in high school, right? Yep. And so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a thing. Probably right? hard it's to not change a, the yeah. culture when someone's like in the MBA program, right? But, you know, starting out, you just started that way in the beginning. And I think it started the roots were with Kevin, like I said. And uh, as it expands, you just kind of keep those same, you know, kind of principles. principles and what, what is the culture here? I mean, I think the culture. Competitive, but collegial. Yeah. But fun as hell. <laughs> and, uh, and, and work hard, get rewarded for your work, right? And uh, work with really good people and try to aim to do, you know, some things together that other people aren't doing, right? And make a difference in the industry and make an impact on the business and therefore, um, you know, make your own life much better and get yourself a lot of opportunities to keep moving up at the company. You know, obviously, growth helps a lot, right? Yeah. If you're a growth company, it leaves a lot of opportunity out there on the table. And we've had a lot of, you know, really kind of young people out of college, um, you know, show what they can do very quickly. And we just keep giving them more, more responsibility and yeah. see how much they can handle it. And uh, a lot of people have built really great careers and it's awesome to watch. Nice. How, how much of an advantage does it give you guys kind of being vertically integrated, having different businesses and different, you know, sectors? Like how, how does that put you? Knowledge. I mean, knowledge is power. And uh, when we work with carriers now because of our brother or sister next door, you know, we know and we saw and we know what it was like to treat carriers bad, you know? I mean, that's not a good way to work. Like, I'll tell you, for the carriers that are listening, get a carrier sales rep at every big broker that's out there. Google top 50 freight brokers. You probably worked with the majority of them. Get one throat to choke. Get a carrier sales rep. Because guess what? Every time you get booked, they get something out of it too. So they're going to want to take care of you with a claim and whatever else. Right. Carrier sales is very important to this. I, I, that's what I learned at Robinson when we bought American backhaulers. Like, holy smokes, the way that they treated carriers, command, uh, coyote, you know, the Chicago groups, right? They had carrier sales, treat them well. It's not just bingo, because you're going to run across them again yeah. and again and again, and they'll remember. And guess what? Technology is getting better. Notes are in the system. That jerk in Dallas just screwed over somebody in Chicago three weeks from now. Right. And there's a digital footprint. Right. <laughs> somebody knows it. Somebody's noted right. it somewhere, right? Yeah. yeah. But, you know, and uh, so it's just cool, man. It's just really, really cool. The, the whole and, and I think everyone sees that how fragmented this industry is. It's like a giant puzzle every day. Right. Right. L looking back now and, and, you know, coming kind of full circle, what, what are some of like the, the major changes that you see in freight? And, you know, is it better than it was? Is it worse? Like, where is it going? Kind of talk about like what you feel is the, the future of, of, of this industry. Oh, it's going to be amazing. Why? Uh, because better, not better. I shouldn't say the word better. Different things are coming in that make everyone more efficient that uh the playing field is getting more and more equal the phone's dangerous the phone is dangerous right you know tone is in there you can tell everything else like that well less and less of that so rates are becoming more and more and more transparent right so it's like deregulation happens so rates are all over the place Right. And then now they're going to kind of come back and then it's going to be about service. It's going to be about um, scale. Right. Everyone's like, why? Why do you keep growing so much? Why are you hiring? Whatever else. When are you ever going to be happy? I'm like, well, scale matters. So I think in the brokerage side, 
in about 10 years, you'll have, you won't have this long a tail. There's 8,000 freight brokers in the U S right now, I think, um, maybe more, probably more. Um, yeah, on the brokerage side, I think scale definitely matters. On the, on the carrier side, I'm not sure if it matters as much. I mean, I think no, no, with, it doesn't with, matter at all. It's with better. technology now that's come in, and uh, you know, partners that you know, like Kevin said, a carrier sales guy can take on basically your sales function, right? You don't need someone in your office uh, making relationships all across the country. You have a freight broker to do that. You know, right. you don't have to uh, be calling and collecting. No, I'm on saying all right now is a good time to get into the industry. Because rates still are all over the place. Don't get me wrong. It's still young. It's younger. This baby of an industry is younger than I am. Right. I'm just saying that in 10 years, 15 years from now, I think it will be harder mm -hmm. because of the money that's coming in. Because like it's it's like now is now is now is very, very important in our industry right now. Do, do you feel like th that efficiency that you're talking about in tech will like in some ways replace or like take over th some of the functions that you guys do on an everyday basis? No. No? No. I mean, I, that we're creating those, I mean, we're spending, I mean, Fritz is, you know, got a technology team. Fritz is a technology, I mean, OTR is a technology business. Yeah, but so what we do see though is when we do introduce a new technology right just an easier way to you know send in your bills or or check credit um you know we're able to use our team to do more value added relationship building type of things right so yeah i do think technology is a huge help and makes us more efficient um you know i don't think we ever want to re reduce our team to all technology no people because right. i think there's always a place for people and relationship relationship solving problems that tech can't do Right. Oh yeah. People are, people are the number one asset, right? It's just people will do different things, right? Again, our people will be able to gain more business, be able to work through problems and other things. Yeah. There are mundane tasks in logistics, right. still very paper heavy. All bill of ladings are pretty much different. Rate cons are different. All people, you know, still fragmented. So that's um, what smartphones are helping with right now that everyone has one, you can, you know, interface with them differently, right? right? And it's learning how the, the best way people want to interface with you, right? right? And it's easiest for them, right? We want to make their lives easier. We want to make our yeah, clients' but, lives but, easier. But, but we would like to do less, I'm sure Fritz would like to do less rate verification check calls and all that. Right. Every broker in America hates getting those calls from factoring companies, right? So that will hopefully get easier and better. Oh yeah, that will get solved. And that's with that's with integrations and the technologies. The you know, problem is every freight broker pretty much has their own technology right. of the large ones because they were started before all this better off the shelf stuff comes. Right. But as we solve those issues, we can worry about new issues, right? So now, hey, we make it much easier for them to submit their their paperwork and get paid. Um, so now let's focus on getting them, uh, helping them find better freight. Right. And providing them um, tools to do their business better and make it more efficient and have them save more money. Right? What, what about carriers adapting to technology? Like, is there a disconnect there ever to where the you carriers are better now? The small carrier is really good. The small carrier from a technology standpoint is better than a large carrier really? because they're using technology in their everyday lives in everything else. that's not as behind as trucking. Right. Right. The small truckers doing other things during the day besides just trucking for the most part, a lot of them. Right. And so they're, they're, especially on the dispatch side, I'm saying, and, and on the booking and finding loads and everything else. So I think, I think they're, they're, they're the smaller carriers forcing the, the industry to get better mm. because there's enough demand for them to win business. If you twisted, confused, or stuck about trucks, don't be dumb. This is the place to come. Truck and hustle. Let's go.